Amen. It certainly means more than saying those words, though, doesn't it? Amen. We really must dedicate our existence to that very end. And only by so doing can we have a prayer of a hope. A prayer of a hope of rejoicing on the other side. And uh, there are many people who have professed a desire to go to heaven, but have been or found themselves obstructed in one way, shape, or form. By the grace of God, we don't want to fall under that heading. Me and that number be one of those on that trophy wall in that trophy case the devil's got. Those that didn't run well, but somehow got hindered. The most unfortunate. I'd like for you to turn with me to Philippians chapter 3. While you're turning there, we're going to look to the Lord yet once again. Dear God in heaven, truly, Lord, we thank you for your word. You've left it here for our learning and our admonition. We pray, Lord, that these things might glorify you tonight. Lord, rebuke the devil. Don't let him have any place here in our services. But rather, my God, help us, Lord, that we might speak that which would be pleasing unto thee and that would bless so great an audience. <clears throat> Keep us in the hollow of your hand, as has already been pray, uh, saying. And Lord God, we'll ever walk worthy by the grace of God. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, I'm going to read the first 14 verses or so. <clears throat> Paul, the apostle, being the writer, said, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision for we excuse me for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh though I might also have confidence in the flesh if any man, any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh I'm more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching, reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Some pretty remarkable thoughts Paul just laid out to these people. 
If you consider what he was saying, it certainly should challenge each one of us tonight almost to no end. I want to lift my verse. I want to frame this discussion with you from verse 11. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. His whole deportment, his whole focus, his whole aim, all that Paul was doing was for one sole reason. And that was somehow to outlast all his problems and all his difficulties and the devil himself and attain a good resurrection. When we read these verses of Scripture, we are reminded that Paul had a tremendous pedigree. His background was one filled with knowledge and experience, instruction, and all the rest. So he had a very strong foundation upon which to build. But he recognized quite quickly that in the day and time in which we live, that was not near enough for him to survive. All that his adversary was going to throw at him. And in order for him to really and truly make it to the other side successfully, he said, I'm willing to abandon everything and anything so I can get there. Notice what he says here in the first few verses. He said, finally, brethren, I'm rejoicing. I'm willing to tell you these same things because it's going to be your safety. There are those who think they're something because they have a certain pedigree, because they're acquainted with a certain uh, group of people, because they know a few doctrines, or because they have a certain standard. Paul said, oh, that's fine and good, but we need to understand it goes beyond that in the day and time in which we're living. And then he goes on to say, I had a number of things that were working on my behalf when I first started this way of, in life. And I came to a point where I realized that even though I've got all these good qualities about me, they really won't suffice. That there's something I have to do to meet or match what the devil's doing in order for me to really be acceptable in that last day. And he said, I'm willing to go so far as to say that I'll count everything that I have, everything I've ever been, all that I've told you about. He said, I'm willing to count it as dumb that I can somehow find myself with a good resurrection when life is at a close. In verse 11, this is the attitude that every true saint should have. I want to entitle my message tonight, Survival of the Fittest. Because there are only going to be a few people that make it through. And everyone here gets a, at their own opportunity to make a decision as to whether you're going to be one of them or not. You don't have to go if you don't want to. And let me tell you something else. You won't go if you don't want to. You're not going to heaven if you don't put forth an effort. Amen. We're not going to somehow stumble in there and all of a sudden be happy that we got to the other side. It's going to take more than that. You and I are going to have to have an attitude that we're going to survive this thing and outlast the devil no matter what he does. Amen. And that means we have to decide it now. You can't decide later. You have to decide that now. So when later comes and whatever it brings, you've already got your mind made up. It's already settled. There's no discussion. There's some things that, that are not negotiable with saints of God. And in particular, the, the foremost thing is you cannot negotiate your experience. God gave you what he gave you and he expected you to occupy it until he comes. That's what the scripture said. And there's no way that he uh, uh, anticipates or expects for us to be less when he comes to take us back to that long home. Most of us started out really well in Christianity. But most people that start off never finish. Most people that start never cross the, the finishing line with grace in their hearts. By far, the majority of people who become Christians fall away. Most of them never even make it back a second time. Most people that call themselves Christians, they want to out there tonight cutting up. And those that really received the experience, the majority of them have gone back and joined those that are cutting up. They just couldn't survive. Some came along their way that 
impeded their progress, hindered them, got in their mind, got under their skin, whatever happened. But then one day just threw up their hands along the way. And before you know it, they were back out there cutting the rug. And I don't mean necessarily that you have to go back physically because you can stay right here in this building. And I can stay in this building and be just as backslidden as day is long. Amen. Just because you're not smoking, drinking, cursing, lying, stealing, gambling, and all the rest of these things we enumerate so frequently does not mean you're not backslidden. Amen. Because backsliding is an attitude of heart. Amen. And it means something for us to be true Christians from the inside out. We can look good on the outside, but the one if we're eating away on the inside, what good does it do? We're just going through a form and a fashion. Paul said, if by any means, if by any means, he understood the complete necessity for abandonment in our day and time. We, we live in an era that's so fleshy and so caught up. It's so busy. All these things are designed to draw you away from God. All these things are designed to stamp out your experience. All these things are designed to dry you up and to squeeze you and to cause you to be ineffective in your soul. And if we don't recognize what the devil's doing to us, he'll have a, he'll have a heyday with us. He knows where your buttons are. He knows how to push them. Amen. He knows if you've got a short wick or not, and he's got plenty of matches. He knows whether your wife or your husband say things that great on you. He knows all about that. And he knows how to get them to say it just at the right time. Try to get you all out the spirit. It's all about survival now. Amen. I'm not saying we shouldn't go on and help others, but then one, you've got to survive yourself before you can help somebody else. You ever been on an airplane, you know the first thing they tell you is when the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if there's a decompression in the cabinet, the first thing that, that, the, that, the, that the, the, the flight attendant tells you, you get your mask. You put your mask on. Then you help your neighbor. Amen. Because you're not going to be much help to your neighbor if you don't put your mask on. You'll have to pass out and you couldn't have helped anybody. Or you won't be able to help anybody because you're going to be gone and they'll be gone too. So he said the first thing you've got to do is watch out for yourself. Now, you say, well, that sounds pretty selfish. Well, in some ways you've got to be selfish. Because I can't live this for you and you can't live it for me. I've got to live my own life. I've got to survive. I've got to figure out how to survive with my own problem, my own test, my own trouble, my own difficult my own tribulation you got your set now i've got mine amen the bible said god wouldn't put more on you than we're able to bear did he not but somehow we got to figure out a way to go through these things with victory so when we get to the other side we'll have a happy ending amen there's just too many things going on among us amen the devil trying to take over on us we better be we better be well aware of what he's working if you can get a little attitude in you about your sister your brother Get a little attitude between me and you. Get a little attitude between your husband and your wife, between you and your children, whatever it takes. The one he's going to use that, exploit it, and mess your soul up. My God, my God. Amen. If he finds a little itching of notoriety and a little desire to be noticed and all that kind of thing, he's going to exploit it. He knows how to take a pin the hole of corru- a pin head of corruption, my friend, and explode that thing and manifest it and, and, and expand it to the place where it all but takes your life over. Oh, Amen. Why is it that most people never survive holiness? Why is it that most people that get saved never keep going? Dear one, they're not willing to com- pay the complete price. When they come up against what is necessary, they back off. The, the, the mountain looks too high. The valley looks too wide. And so they faint in their mind long before they ever get through. And they give up. When the children of Israel were offered an opportunity to go over to the Canaan land, God sent ten Twelve spies. And there was absolutely no reason in the world why they couldn't have gone over into Canaan and completely survived that battle. There was none. In fact, the, the promise had already been made, this is your land. Already, God had already told Abraham, he said, I'm going to give this land to your seed. When Abraham passed through, this is going to be yours and your seeds. It was already there for the taking. But when they went over, my friend, Satan had a way of so manipulating what they saw in their own eye that they came back and out of the 10 out of the 12 nearly fainted before they even got back. When they were asked, can we take the land? They were, they were saying, well, there's giants over there. They, they recognized there was, there was great victory to be had. They recognized it was a good land to occupy. They saw that there were wonderful things at their disposal, but they what they saw beyond that just caused them to faint. 
So we can't survive. Those people will eat us like bread. They're giants in that land. And they're, they're like, and we're like grasshoppers. Well, that's, that's pretty serious. A grasshopper is not very big compared to a man. And if somebody's a giant and you're a grasshopper, you're not very large. You're, you're looking at it and being quite <laughs> tiny in your own sight. And, and we, don't, we understand that to be small in our own sight is important, but not like that. Not when it's talking about discouragement. The Bible, somebody quoted tonight, said, we, I can do all things, what? Through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. Listen, our adversary worked on those people's mind, and they threw up their hand. Most of them said, we can't make it. But thank God for Caleb and Joshua. Yeah. Thank God they had another spirit. Yeah. Thank God they showed us that we, like, we can be like them. Not like the other ten, but we can be like them. Amen. We can go and say, give me this mountain. We can take this. We can survive. Not because we have great strength. Not because we've amalgamated great power. Not because we have chariots and horses. But we have God on our side. That's why we can make it. Because we are behaving ourselves in a way that God will put his blessing on it. And when he blesses us, we can have confidence and call on him. Amen. When we need his help. Amen. The one most people are not going to survive. There are going to be some people here right in this congregation that have started out and not going to make it. May have every intention of making it, but not going to. Can't go through. Because there are too many things that's holding them back and holding them down and restricting them, impeding them. Too many obstacles in their own hearts and minds. Some of their own making. Some they've erected themselves that somehow they can't get past it, can't get over it, can't get around it. We don't want to be like that. Amen. How many times have we said, and we say it again, the one... If over the years, all the people that have come and call themselves saved, amen, if they were here tonight, we wouldn't have enough room in this building. They'd overthrow us or overwhelm us or overflow us. That's the word I want. There would be too many of them in here. But the, the reason why th that God's people are as small as they are is because often the, the, what it takes to survive is too much in some people's minds and they faint. They'll hear, they'll hear, they'll hear, they, they will hear a testimony or see somebody else going through something. And they, the devil immediately magnified it. Well, I can't do that. I, I can't make it like that. I can't go that way. I can't do all that. What, 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 what kind of attitude is that? What kind of attitude is that? You defeated before you ever got started. And much of the battle we're fighting is not external now. It's internal. And a lot of it starts right up here. Amen. A lot of it's got to do with attitude. If your attitude is not right, then you can forget all the rest. If you say you can't, you can't make it, you won't. I can't make it. Well, you probably won't. You go, you, I, I'm telling you right now, you might as well just come on down to the altar and get saved. If you think you can't make it, you might as well just get something in your soul for real. Yeah. Amen. Because you're not going to make it if you say, I can't. Yeah. Amen. But even if we say we can, we got to do it by God. Yeah. We don't just say we can and think we can just be anything or do anything. You know what? We do it by God's help. Yeah. Amen. Survival is from heaven. But we got to have a mind to do it. We got to be determined by the grace of God. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to make it through this. I'm going to survive. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If I got to fight all night long, I don't get a week of sleep. By the grace of God, when the morning comes, I'll be the victor. If I got to wrestle with that angel and he got to change my name, I'll be the victor. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be pushed off back in the corner somewhere and be on the defensive all the time. By the grace of God, I'm going on the offensive. Yeah. Amen. I'm resisting the devil. Amen. I'm not going to let make, him, make him have me talking back. I'm not going to have him make me act out of sorts. I'm not getting all upset. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to have victory in my soul. Amen. 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 Praise God, they've been pushing my button, but I'm going down to the altar. I'm getting this button purged out of me. They can push and prod and do everything they want to. There'll be no button now. I'm getting the victory. Amen. I want the same testimony that Paul or Jesus had. The prince of this world coming. Prince of this world's coming every which way. Trying everything he can. Trying to see if I'm going to survive. He's come midnight hour, morning time, afternoon. Come with people, problems, things. He said he come, but what? He can't find a thing in me. He's here working all night. All the devil's been up all day and all night contemplating and working on trying to find something in me. And he hasn't found it yet. And then he's not going to find it because there's nothing in there. That's a testimony. Listen to what Paul said here. He said, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection 
and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means. There was some time you had to do something a little extraordinary for you to survive this. Sometime your problem is going to mean a little more than you just saying your little a midnight uh, uh, bedtime prayer, now lay me down to sleep, and that's going to work. Sometime, my friend, you had to get down on your knees and you had to talk to God. And you have to know that you reached heaven. Amen. And you're going to keep praying and praying and praying until you know that you have. You're going to have to have breakthrough. There's some things when you get involved in, you got to know that God's in it or you're, not, or you're going to make a, uh, or you're going to shatter your life. You're going to ruin yourself. Amen. Amen. You see, we didn't, we didn't, this is not a play thing. I remember Sister Green sitting there many years and she made this comment and destructed my soul. She said, saints, this is it. In other words, there's no other doctrine. There's no other standard. There, this is the real deal. There's no, no, no need to look at somewhere else. Then what if you're going to make heaven? This is how you're going to do it. You no need trying to find an easier way, a better way, another way. This is it. So you might as well knuckle down and get before God and get some help so you can make it. No need making excuses for failure. Praise God. Get over it. Get the victory. Man, if we do happen to fall short, we don't make excuses. We say, Lord, I didn't get it where I wanted it, but by the grace of God, I'm getting it now. Amen. Because I got to survive here. Amen. Paul realized that his reliance on anything, anybody, anywhere, the one was doomed, a, a recipe for disaster, he was doomed to failure. You can't rest on people. Listen, all the good experiences, the people we got in here, the one that nobody can rest on your experience and get through heaven, you got to have your own experience. Yeah. Mama might be able to pray her way out of all kind of trouble, but if you can't pray your way out of it, what good does it do you? Amen. You got to be able to develop a way to, to be strengthened to stand on your own two feet. You got to be able to survive this thing because, look, it's a jungle. And there's ravenous beasts out there just waiting to pounce on every last one of us. Amen. Waiting for an opportunity to get in your life, in your heart, in your mind, some kind of way and mess you up. Amen. But if we will stay down low in our souls, stay before God and fasting and praying, calling out on him. Amen. By the grace of God, I guarantee you that you'll have the victory and you'll survive. Amen. Let me go on record as saying this. There is absolutely no problem you can't pray your way out of. Did you hear what I said? There is no problem that you can't pray your way, way out of. I mean, there's no situation that God will not give an answer for. Amen. 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 And we should not enter into or be involved in this thing that we don't know whether God answered or not. You want to survive? Amen. Then this is how to do it. I mean, whenever Satan can convince people to stop short, it's, a, it's, it's guaranteed they're going to stop and then soon be overthrown. You got to keep going. Amen. I, 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 I fear that some people take this thing lightly, a little too lightly. I mean, they're like, 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 for instance, coming to church is like a, just something I do if I want to do and I don't do it if I don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if I got something to do, I'll do that. If I don't have it, I, I, that's not the way it works. The Bible says, the Bible says, not, what? Not, what? Not forsaking, what? The assembling of yourselves, what? Together is the manner of some. We don't want to be like some. Because the Bible talks about some many, many times and almost always, the some got bad things happen to them. Which some have turned away and made shipwreck. Amen. He didn't say very good things about the sum. We don't want to be one of the sum. Amen. Do you want to, we want to survive? We want to survive. I mean, that means involving ourselves in spiritual activity. That means getting before God and getting something down in our soul. That means fighting the devil and resisting him day in, day out, month in, month out, year in, year out. Amen. That means fighting him no matter how he comes or where he comes. That means withdrawing ourselves from time to time, just getting quiet. Talking to God. Getting experience down our soul. Having a communication line between us and Him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, when we're trying to survive. Yeah. You, know, you know, Charles Darwin was on, some of that stuff he came up with was absolutely foolish, but some things he was right about. Let's be honest. Some things he was right about. The one when it comes to this thing called natural selection, you know what that's talking about? It's saying that anytime a species gets into an environment, those that don't adapt themselves, they fall off. Yeah. Hear what I'm saying? So as saints of God, we all know we got an environment we got to adapt to. Now, now, what I'm not saying is that we don't become like it. The one we have to find a way to overcome it. 
Amen. The environment that we are in now is called Laodicea. It's an environment that's designed to put us to sleep. So we got to find a way to stay awake. We got to find a way to resist this thing. We got to find a way to fight that spirit. And if we don't find a way to do one, we're not surviving. Amen. If we can't figure out how to, how to resist the devil in that day and time, then we're going to be just, just sifted through by natural selection. Only the strong can survive this. And when I say strong, I mean those that God's helping. Because we have no strength of ourselves. Don't misunderstand me. Amen. The Bible says here, Paul said, by any means. He said, if by any means. I mean, this once a day, you know, two-minute prayer, 30 seconds worth of Bible reading a week, you know, and a once every six months fast. Oh, mercy. You, you're, you're right picking. You're right pickings. The devil waiting to put your, your head up on the wall here. You know, it's kind of like got a trophy case. I think somebody said they had a dream or something like that one time. I don't know what the preaching was, but... Basically, they came in and said, well, what are all these up on your wall? There weren't these plaques, these heads. Oh, well, this is to old sister so-and-so. Now, she was saved for 25 years. But she never really did get the victory over fussing with her husband. And one day, he came in and she asked for a dress and he said no. And she just exploded. And I got it. There she is. And this is brother so-and-so. He couldn't get his eyes off the sisters no matter what. He, could, uh, he tried for years to get the victory over that spirit, but he never did. And then one walked by, and he just chased after her, and there he is. And this brother right here, he loved money. And, and, and he worked for years for a little bit, but always in the down of his heart, he was covetous. He was haughty. He was high-minded. But I, 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 I kept working with him. I worked with him. I worked with him for 35 years. A little here, a little there. And finally, at long last, I sent a little lottery ticket his way, and I had him. Boom, he's gone. Amen. But God's got a showcase, too. Oh, God's got a showcase, too. That's where we want to be. We want to get over yonder and say, Jesus, what about this one? Praise God, Nick. What about it? Here she comes. You can talk to her. What happened to you? Well, my husband was acting ugly. He was cutting up acting crazy. Well, what'd you do? I just looked at him, but down inside I was praying with all fervency. Amen. I was asking God to help me. I was asking God not to let anything come up in me that ought not to be. I was asking God not to let me say a single word that I should never say. And then when he was done, praise God, I sweetly looked at him and said, Honey, are you finished now? I'm sorry if I've done anything to offend you, and I just need to go pray now. What about brother so and how he make it? Well, that brother, the girls were swarming him. And he just kept his head looking up where heaven is. He said, I'm not going to do anything. I got no business. Nothing. Amen. 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 I'm, 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 my mind's made up like Joseph. I got to come out my coat and I'm gone. Amen. And what about this one right here? He was offered a $250,000 job, but he had to move away from the church and work day and night. $250,000 a month. He is making twenty a year, and they offered him two hundred fifty thousand a month. But he said, "No, I can't have it. If it means moving down here, I'm not going to do it." Amen. And I know you can do it too. When I was a little younger, I worked for a company, and oh, brother, they gave me great promises about what I was going to be. They wanted to, they moved the company from here to Orlando, Florida. Do you all remember that? Oh, they moved the company, and they were talking to people one by one, Brother Chad, and they were bringing them into the offices, and finally they brought me in. And they sat me down, and I'm like, well, I wonder what's going on here. I don't know why. What have I done? So my boss is sitting across from me and said, Ron, we're moving the company. We're moving to sunny Orlando, Florida, the land of oranges and grapefruits, where it be sunshine all the time. Beautiful country. And we consider you to be an important part of our corporation, and we want you to move with us. What do you think of that? What do you think of that? 
I sat there a few moments and I thought to myself, I don't know of any congregation in Orlando, Florida. Well, praise God. And I told him right there on the spot. I said, I'm not moving. You, wait a minute. You don't understand what we said. You're moving. We're not, don't go, it's not going to be any ice. Hello. You won't have to shovel any snow. Mickey Mouse. Palm trees, yeah. orange groves, yeah. sunshine. I said, I'm not moving. I don't know of a church in Orlando, and I'm not going to go. So where you going to be? You look, say, well, look, you'll have, you'll have, you'll be this. When you get down there, we'll put you over this department. Well, you won't have to do this anymore. You won't have to do that anymore. I said, duh. I'm not moving. Do you understand what that means? That means if you don't move, you're not going to have a job. I had a little boy then. Little Ron was a baby. Had a wife. Just bought a new house. That's all I knew, dear one. But I'm telling you, God said, you can't go down there. I wasn't careful to answer. And I'm not saying this boastfully. I'm telling you, this is how God can help a person. I said, oh, no, I'm not going. Okay, well, I said, well, will you help us then? Will you help us set up our new plan? I said, okay, I'll, I'll consent to that. And did one, little did I know that all that world was trying to trap me. Oh, they were trying to trick me. They fly me down. I had never been on an airplane, Brother Chad. Never in my life. I was a young boy. I put me on that airplane. I had a top, I left in March, man. It was cold, rainy here, dark. You know how a normal Columbus Day is. Dreary looking clouds, gray. March, you know March. Just cold, man. Just cold. I had a top coat on. And they fly me down. I'm up in this thing, you know. I don't know anything about flying. Man, when I get down to Orlando, I get ready to get off the plane. It's like, woof. It's like sun shining. It's 85 degrees or so. I'm thinking like, what in the world have I got this coat on for? I'm burning up. They put me in a plush hotel. They gave me all, just about all the money I wanted. At that time, you know, now nowadays it may not be much money, but at that time they was giving me four and five hundred dollars a week. But that wasn't my salary, understand. That was the money to go down there and live. So I have all this money in my hand, and plus I was getting paid. And they were kind enough, if you call it that, they were paying me overtime. That, that was crazy. They were paying me overtime during the time that I was flying. So I could, if it took me 13 hours to fly from the day that I left, they paid me for 13 hours. Overtime. I mean, money was just coming in. And I'd get down there and the folks got to talking. Ron, when you're moving down, when you're coming to be with us, I'm trying to survive. I can't move down here. Ron, when you're coming? You go outside in the morning, I call Joan on the phone, how thing. Oh, you know, it's 35 degrees and it's snowing. Oh, Lord, have mercy, <laughs> Lord. Why is it down there? It's 75 and sunshine. It's exactly what I like. Oh, there's a little thunderstorm to gather. It took about 10 minutes. Lightning flash, rain. Then the sun came right back. That was a beautiful day. Every day. That's right. And I go down there and they give me these cards. One time I rode up in there and this, this lady said, because they had seen me so many times, she said, I'm going to give you something you really like. I'm like, what's that all about? She said, I think you'll like this. She handed me the keys of this car. She said, go look it. I goes out there and Brother Samuel, she gave me a yellow Cadillac <laughs> with a white vinyl top. And white interior. I'm like, oh, Father. What are they trying to do to me down here? Now, I'm not driving anything like that at home. You know that. You know, you know the kind of cars I drive. That fool would be falling apart. <laughs> I drive a car into the ground, and you all know it. Thing be rusted, stuff be flapping on it. I'm still driving. Cars don't mean that much to me. But I had that. When I drove down the street, and those of you that have been in Orlando, you know what I'm talking about. It's called Orange Blossom Trail. 
All these girls were standing on the side. And when I drove by, I wasn't paying attention to had to look over. And they were all looking at me. And I looked over and I said, oh, Lord, I got to get rid of this car. I can't drive this car. I can't drive this car. I cannot drive this car. I went straight to, to the office. And the general manager looked out the window. He said, Ron, he said, look like, look like it should have been me driving up in there. You driving that car. I went over to a man named Cordell Couch. I know how he was. He had that spirit. I said, Cordell, what kind of car you got? He said, I got a Ford such and such. I said, hey, man, I, this lady gave me a Cadillac. Would you like to trade cars? <laughs> oh, Cordell, let me trade? Yeah, give me the key. I said, here, you can have it. Yeah. Give me that Ford. Yeah. I'm trying to survive. Yeah. I'm trying to make heaven my home. Yeah. Brother, I've given up jobs, several of them. Amen, I've set aside many a thing so I can be a Christian. And I know if I can do it, then you can do it. Amen. No matter what your problem is, God can help you through. Yes. If you mean to survive, he'll give you the wherewithal to do it. Yes. But you've got to make up in your mind that you want to do whatever it takes so you can survive. Amen. Yes. There's, a, there's a world out there swallowing people up. Yes. Amen. I'm reminded of the story of a man not long ago. I don't know exactly if I'm getting it right, but I'm close enough. He was trapped. It was a bear trap. Maybe it was a mountain climber. But he, he had a choice. That's right. He got his arm caught. And he had a choice. He could stay there and dangle and hope somebody would come and get him. Or he had to do the unthinkable. Cut his own arm off. Amen. Was it caught in a tree? Caught in a tree. He, he had to make a decision. The one he pulled out a knife. Cut his own arm off. See, I'm, I got to survive. If I stay out here, I'm going to die. Yeah. Amen. I'm, and he's still here. He's still living. He made, a, he made a choice. Jesus made a very similar comment. He said, if your eye offend you, what? He said, if your hand offend you, what? He said, if your foot offend you, what? Amen. Something got to be cut out, plucked out if you want to survive. Yeah. I'm not talking about literal. I'm talking about spiritually. But if you expect to be a survivor, that's what it's going to take. It might sound extreme, but praise God, it won't be that extreme when we get to the other side. We'll rejoice in it. Yes. If we don't do it now, then when we're going to be caught. We'll be caught. We'll be caught. Amen. If God can help me do it, then he can help you do it. Amen. Why is it that we are, should be willing to resort to any means? Why is it that we should be willing to fight and, and, and go through? Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's read what, this, what the Bible says in verse number 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent be God he. you got to resort to any means because the devil will. He's, listen. Unless God stops him, he'll do whatever he can or anything. The only thing that keeps him from doing more to us is the fact that God got a hedge on us. But every once in a while, he lifts that hedge. And we got to be willing to do a little extra. Amen. To withstand that blow. You're not going to get in a, bat, you're not gonna get in a fight with, with, with Muhammad Ali and you haven't trained. You're not going to get in the ring with some heavyweight and you haven't done a thing. The one is going to take some exercise. You got to prepare yourself. You got to get ready. Amen. We don't know what's going to come on us. That, 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 that concerned me every once in a while. We don't know, really know what's going to come. We don't know who the next one will be. It might be me. It might be you. And we have to rally to each other's side, and we need to be prepared for that. There's no need in just get, trying to get ready when it comes. we got to get ready now. we got a little time to prepare ourselves. Well, let's do it. Let's not wait till the last minute and get caught. Procrastination, they say, is what? The thief of time. Amen. So it's better to get yourself ready now. If, if you notice little things in your life that aren't quite where they ought to be, then you pray about them now. Just, just get the victory over now. Don't, don't mess around and let us toy with it and say, okay, okay, okay. Instead, let's get the victory now. We want to survive. Amen. They say, we had, went through a little exercise a number of years ago when I was in this little management thing, and they were talking about the, the, the uh, airplane crash, and we were pretending, and all the things we were supposed to do. Said, we, you know, the airplane crashed and, you know, there was 15 of you left and, and you were left with this and that. It gave a certain number of items that we had and a 
some wet, some matches, some wet, and all this kind of stuff. So what would you do to survive? And so we had to get in a little group, and we all decided what things we would do and how we would do it. And they wanted to, surprisingly, the majority of the people would have perished out there in the Arctic. They would have, they would have perished. We, I think our little group said, well, we'll send a, group, a little expedition group out to circle somebody. This is one of the worst things you could possibly do. They don't know where they're going. You're out on the North Pole. you got a magnet. But how's the magnet going to react right? You don't know which direction you're going. You get out there. It's cold. turns night. They'll be frozen, and you'll be left behind. In other words, had other, they said, sometimes the best thing you can possibly do is just hush yourself and be quiet. Just stay right where you are. Maybe you can keep each other warm, figure out a way to dry out those matches, burn that paper, and then use that mirror as a reflection. They had a way. When the experts looked at it, they looked a lot different than us. Amen. You and I are experts at survival. We've got experts written there in the Bible. We've got, the, we got the notes written from the experts in the Bible. We should know how to survive. We know there's certain things that if we get involved in, we're not going to make it. We know that. So no need to indulge in that. We just stay away from that. No, I can't go there. I can't be with that. I can't say that. I can't go. I can't act like that. That's not part of me. Uh-uh. We are part of that expert group. Don't let the devil trick you. There's only going to be a few people go to heaven in, 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 in uh, comparison to how many are lost. And the devil has got no bars hold. You know, we used to say all fair and love and war. I mean, that one thing, when, when I used to fight, I mean, if, if you start getting the best of me, I'm not going to sit there and just take it. I wasn't like that. I'm looking for a brick, bat, bar, something, rock. I'm, I'm finna kick you. Anything. I'm not just taking a licking. You beating up on me, and I'm going to say, well, this, yeah, well, this is a fight, so I'm going to go, no, you knock me out and go down to brick. Bam! You cheated, yeah, and I won. That's what I'm saying. That's what we got to have with the devil. He's pushing you around and beating you up and got you acting kind of way. You need to get down on your knees and say, God, give me strength. Give me some strength down in my soul. Shake my frame. Fill me with power. Make me different. Change me. Rearrange me. Give me the authority I need. So he said, Lord, I'm not eating today. I got something on my mind, on my heart. I need some power. I don't, want, I don't want the taste of food. You, you can bring me my favorite. I don't want it. I'm not, I'm not hungry. Amen. I'm not hungry. I, I, I want a victory. There's a victory. I, I got to have it. I'm trying to survive. There's just too many people out there that are just giving up and throwing their, throwing their hands. Oh, I can't make it. And getting, trying to get back at people and all that kind of stuff. But what, what does that do for any of us? Lord, have mercy. Amen. Listen. If he's willing to resort to anything, then we need to understand we've got to fight back. I don't mean carnal. You understand when I make that a, a comparison. I'm not saying you go get a brick and try to hit the devil. We'll get you a spiritual brick and hit him. Right. Wipe him upside his head. You say, Ron, if you had a chance, would you kick the devil? You better believe it. Who, who got combat boots? Anybody got any combat boots here? Huh? You got some combat boots? Now come and borrow those bad boys. Okay, the devil's coming by tonight. Let me borrow your combat boots. What you going to do with them? I'm going to lace them up tight and I'm going to kick him. Oh, oh it's going to be a kick down. Flashback. Oh, brother. They'd have to call me off this foolishly. Why are you going to kill him? I know, I know. Trying to kill him. Hate him. Say, would you kill him if you could? Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't, huh? No, I'd bring him over to the house. We have a nice dinner. We have a little chicken soup together. Oh, uh, yeah. Poison your foolishness. And you'd be all dead and everything. Uh, you'd be smiling at you and grinning at you and put poison in your chicken soup. <laughs> Look over there. What? Over there. Oh, my bad. That was nothing. Go ahead and eat your soup. <laughs> If we intend to negate or nullify his action against us, then we must have, we got to counter his action with an action that's, with a reaction that's either equal or greater than the one that he's coming against. When the devil push on you, you got to push back. But you don't push back literally. Amen. When he want to push you, you pray. He push a little harder, you pray a little harder. Amen. The more he try to work on you, the better you behave. Amen. 
Amen. And God can help you. Amen. Amen. But we're not going to survive if we don't put forth an effort here. It's not enough to cruise into heaven. We're not going to just get in there by accident. I've, I've said that many times. Amen. Brother Kelly used to say, you're not going to get in. We can't put you in handcuffs and make you go. But by the same token, you're not going to survive this thing by just sitting back on your laurels. You might have been very successful in time. Play. There may be some many great things about you, but the one, this is a battle. And it is real as real can be. There's feelings involved. Attitudes involved. Thoughts involved. There's finances involved. There's living space involved. There's futures and past and all that stuff's all mixed together. But praise God we can survive. Amen. Amen. I, I want to be a survivor. Don't you? Amen. I want to be a survivor. Yeah. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego looked like they, were gonna, they weren't going to make it. Amen. It seemed like the whole world was against them at that time. Amen. We're not bowing down, they told it. We're not careful. We don't need us. Having a long discussion about we're not going to do it. We're not doing it. Just not doing it. You're not going to make me do it. So we'll throw them in that fire. Burn them up. It took the strongest men, the strongest men over there and ran up, grabbed them and said before they could throw them in, they died. Because the heat was so intense. I mean, that heat was so great. My friends, it re- it re- retched up as one would say and, and, and killed those strong soldiers. And Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego fell down into the fire. And old King Nebuchadnezzar was looking out there thinking real self-satisfied and smug about himself. And then he realized these boys survived. He rose up, the Bible said. And he asked somebody, say, hey, how many did we throw in there? Didn't we just throw three? Say, yeah. He said, well, I see four. And the fourth is like the son of God. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if your God is able to deliver you, come up out of that fire. And here they come. Here we are, king. Said they didn't even smell. You smell pretty good. (laughs) God, Sister Nancy, be careful of that. You don't smell that too much, especially in church. Said they didn't even smell like smoke. Smell like smoke. Not a hair of their hair, head was singed. Not even singed. It's a tremendous thing. And Nebuchadnezzar he said, You know what? I ain't messing with this anymore. There's something unusual going on here. This is this this is beyond me. Amen. And I like that one song that said there was four in the fire. Amen. And the three came out and they said, Where's the fourth man? Where is he? He's still in the fire. He's still in the fire waiting for you when it's your turn. Brother Keith, when it's your turn. Brother Hippolyte, when it's your turn. Sister Beverly, he's still in the fire. Brother Payne, when it's your turn to go in the fire. Yes. <laughs> Somebody's taking good care of you. Amen. You just can't help it. Amen. Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. You know what, if we want to survive, God will help us. Amen. He'll give us all the tools and equipment so we can do it. But we got to put it to use. Yeah. You can't just say, I want to be a survivor and go off somewhere and not do anything. you got to work on it. Yeah. Amen. That's mean sometimes you got to turn your plate over. I mean, sometimes you got to get up out of that bed. I mean, sometimes you might wake up in the midnight hour, the early morning hour, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6 o'clock. Amen. 6 o'clock, that's late. 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock. And you just get up and say, oh, God. Lord, this is a quiet time. Father, all the other saints might well be asleep. I don't know. My God bless each one of them. Help them in the name of Jesus. Take care of them, Lord. Remember sister so-and-so in her situation. Remember brother so-and-so and this and that. And then when you get down, you saying, oh, Lord, remember thy servant. Remember me. My God, help me. Lord, I want to survive. I want to negotiate my way between all of these obstacles and trouble. Lord, you see my spirit. Help me. Lord, I don't want anything in me that ought not to be. Lord, purge it out. Help me, my God, you see me. You're looking down from heaven. You see this young man. My God, do something with me. Use me to your purpose, Lord. Help me not to be too high-minded. Help me not to be anything I ought not to be. I'm going to start praying here. Lord, have mercy. Better get up. You need to pray for yourself. You need to pray 
for yourself. You want to survive. You know what it means if you don't survive? Do you understand what that means? You go to hell. If you don't survive, you're going to be lost. You got to survive. But Ron, you got to do it. It's not a matter whether you want to or not. That's fine. But you got to. That's my answer. I got to do this. There have been a few times on my job where I had this thing come up and I just didn't want to do them. I had, my boss had me fire an old lady one time. When I say older, I, I, don't, I don't mean disrespectfully. I mean, she was an older lady. I just thought, man, this is tough. All day long, I looked at her. She was smiling, grinning, happy. And all day long, just something was working inside me. So you got to fire her at 3.30 or 4.30. She's going to be fired. You got to fire. You got to fire. You got to fire. That was hard. It was very hard. What? I had to do what I had to do. I was the hatchet man. So we did what we had to do. But it was hard. It was very hard. And sometimes you have to do things you don't like. Amen. But then when God will help you. Amen. And when you get done, you can look back and say, well, it really wasn't that pleasant, but I'm on the other side now. Yeah. The Bible said when Jesus looked at the cross, he didn't want to go. What did it say? He was despised. But despised the shame of it. Amen. But what did it say about it? But he looked at it because of the glory set before him. That was on the other side of that. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to survive. I'm surviving this. I'm going to be a survivor. Amen. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can go take a hike. Like the children sing sometimes, if the devil doesn't like it, I'll run right over him. <laughs> I'll run right over him. How would they sing? Let's stand.